guys. I think it's fair that uh, we got to do one of these, right? We just did a <laughs> Mushoku Tensei quote unquote drama video. And you know, to balance the, the scales, right? I got to do one for ReZero. So, rant. ReZero is not a masterpiece. ReZero is trash. All right. All right, give it to me. Warning, this video contains a random guy trashing your favorite anime or manga series. Right. So if you're one of those sensitive fanboys that get butthurt over the slightest criticism. No, 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 no. I am on the hunt right now to look for content where people are willing to go against the popular narrative, but without doing lazy baits. So far, the rage baits farms that we've content we've seen, they are actual monkeys and have no talking points to, you know, convince the audience at large why this show is bad. They just say it's bad because it's bad. And it's like, this is just like low effort trolling. Is this kind of guy going to be legit? I hope so. Then I advise you to go find you something that's a little bit more tolerable. All right. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm finished on, or I mean, trash on your favorite anime series. Let's go. Give so it to don't me. Don't say I didn't warn you so. All right. ReZero is one of the many series in the anime community that receives a lot of praise, and to be honest, I really don't understand why. Okay. It's trash as fuck. Like, why? in all seriousness, and of course, this is just my opinion, but this has to be one of the worst shows I've seen in a minute. And the crazy shit is that- I mean, it's hard for me to take that so, like, like, it, it just comes off so intellectually dishonest when you say you've seen ReZero Season 1 and you say that this is one of the worst animes you've seen in a while. Because I know for a fact that season of anime alone, probably Karokawa pumped out so much fucking isekai garbage, right? There is no way that you can genuinely say that Season 1 of ReZero is one of the worst animes you've seen in a while when you are... Maybe he's not consuming many other animes, right? To him, maybe this is like a, he checks out an anime every once in a while, but... It's just, there's so much garbage slop that comes out that makes ReZero on Relative just look godlike. That the first three episodes were actually decent. Not good or great, but they were passable. The okay. idea of a guy dying and coming back to life and him using his power to save other people is an interesting great. concept. But just like Sword Art Online, the series had a very interesting concept to only fuck it up with anime weeb shit. From the weird ass- What do you mean fuck it up? SAO, the concept, I, I, I guess the concept here is that season one, it was like, you die in a video game, you die in real life. But that kind of went away as we just finished the you know, Aincrad arc, you know, it, it, the whole Heathcliff reveal and we log out and then we go into ALO and it's just like, what the fuck are we doing? And then there's a little bit more element of like real life death, I guess, in GGO through Zaza, but uh, conceptually did ReZero ruin its premise by using regression? How did it get ruined? I'm not even sure. Maybe you could argue that if this guy actually watched season two content, and I don't think he has in this video, this is specifically about season one, you could argue that like because of straight bed and the nature of you know, not wanting to, uh, to sacrifice yourself over and over, but living for yourself and to continue these runs without forcing return by death, then you could have some narrative of like, I don't like this because now the regression mechanic is intentionally being handicapped by the author and it kind of like defeats the purpose of using it. Maybe there's some truth there you could, you know, stand against it, but like, how does season one ruin it? In concept to only fuck it up with anime weeb shit. From the weird ass main character to the obvious waifu bait the series puts out, it's clearly obvious that the show was created for anime weebs who like to ship and beat. Isn't it crazy that an anime was made for anime weebs? If your point right now is that there's a main character that is kind of weird and there's a bunch of waifus in an anime, bro, you can make this point for every fucking anime. Pretty much most anime is the same shit. Their dicks to cartoons while also fantasizing about being with fictional characters. Like it's already bad enough that the show starts off with the main character being randomly teleported to a different world with no explanation whatsoever. I would argue that that teleportation shit, it's supposed to not make sense right now and it's supposed to be some endgame big giga brain play. But as an anime only, you could definitely assume that this, you know, you blink and you're in a different world is bullshit. And hell, even 12 episodes in, they still don't explain the shit. But oh, let me guess, I have to watch 20 plus episodes. 
more than 20 plus episodes. This shit's not gonna get explained for a long, long time. To get the answer, right? Man, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. And maybe, just maybe, I would have watched 20 plus episodes of this bullshit if the first 12 episodes were any good. The first that is so dishonest. I mean, you already said that the first three episodes were passable, but that's not good to you. You saw episode three, you know, Reinhardt versus Elsa, and that wasn't good to you. You saw, like, you know, episode seven and ReZero of Subaru just having, like, you know, the most emotional fucking outburst, you know, asking them, what can I do? You never cared about me. Like, what am I supposed to do? All that shit made no sense. Even, like, right after that, the whole revelation of, you know, straight bed plays again, and he jumps off the cliff. And it's just this wonderful way of like accepting his fault and realizing that he wants to protect everybody and you know he's gonna fucking be serious locked in this time and then the whole like comeback of saving the village the whole triumphant moment happening like like none of that shit was good to you what is good anime to you then i would like to see actual direct examples of like what he thinks is a good anime versus this because right now again you're just saying it's bad because bad the talking points made so far is i don't like how he ported into isekai world if that is such a detriment you are like the softest snowflake ever to fucking watch media like that shouldn't be like the turning point of like i can't watch this shit anymore unwatchable then your other points are like oh main character has waifus brother that's fucking like 80% of anime that exists. These are things that's not limited to ReZero. The constructive criticism is nowhere to be found. First three episodes were okay, but the last nine episodes were a fucking pain to get through. Like after episode 12, I just said, fuck this shit. I can't take it no more. Get this trash out of my face. Why? Like I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that episodes four to seven were pretty much the same fucking episode. And this is something that I constantly hear from actual idiots that don't understand the point of ReZero. They look at the regression mechanic and think that every loop is pointless, repeated garbage, and there's, it's filler. But it's just like, did you actually watch the episodes? Because if you did, you cannot genuinely tell me that the nature of him looping throughout the day is somehow the same fucking events happening. It's fundamentally different in the way that he approaches things, right? There's many different lessons to be had in each different loop. They're not filler, like, same shit. Like, they add some new shit here and there, but it's not enough to where I would say that it didn't feel like the same episode. Also, keep in mind when watching this video that I'm only talking about the first 12 episodes of this show. Okay. Whatever happens after episode 12, I don't fucking care. Now, I think it's only right that I start with my opinion on the characters because characters are one of the most important things when creating a good story. Yeah. The characters in ReZero, they fucking suck. Why do they suck? I think that the characters in ReZero compared to many other shows, it's so deep. It's so enriched. The amount of lore, world building that each character shows up and gives us is crazy to me, right? Even like Amelia in the beginning, what happens? You meet her and you kind of are like, oh, cute, you know, uh, silver haired elf girl. I wonder what's happening. Oh, shit, what? You, call, you want me to call you Satala? Why did Puck say that's a weird name? Okay, that's kind of weird. Half elf. Wait, there's prejudice and discrimination going on here? Oh, I see. Oh, Satala's the name of the Witch of Envy? Wait, the Witch of Envy destroyed this world 400 years ago? It grazed the world flat? There's more witches? See how, like, there's, like, this, like, peeling of onion layers? It's not static. It's not, like, this boring, uh, you know, bland character where they just exist to be self-insert fucking MC and, you know, perfect waifu that just exists. Every character is so deep that the more you peel back the layers and try to see what's underneath, the more enriched the story becomes. I think that is like just proof of amazing storytelling abilities. And the characterizations that you can get from those, again, onion layers, it's beyond beautiful. Even Subaru. And of course, he's not going to know this shit because he's only got to episode 12. But if you get to like season two and you see the trials, you get to see exactly what's happening in season one of ReZero and why Subaru acts the way he does. For a lot of people, it's very confusing. Mostly because the amount of monologues are cut out from what he's thinking to the actions that he portrays. But when you see season two, the trials, and you see his backstory, you're like, oh, it makes so much sense why he was such a cocky idiot, arrogant, doing all these poses, yet he's a neat who's supposed to not be, you know, so proud of themselves. What's going on, right? The more you watch, the more you understand. It's so much deeper than it seems. But tourists like this will get simply filtered out at, you know, just the designs of the characters and they can't even comprehend what a good character even means. 
Subaru is a cringy ass creep and if it wasn't for the other characters being completely oblivious to other world practices, then they would have looked at this motherfucker and would have thought he was a fucking creep too. They do. I think a lot of people find him honestly suspicious too in Arc 2, right? Like, sure, maybe the creep aspect is not fixed focused on, but like, I think a lot of people also don't realize that like, he is an extremely suspicious person that's shown up to the point during this like, you know, wartime period where, uh, you know, the royal family is all dead and it's just like, what? A foreigner just, you just showed up out of nowhere and you're fixing stuff and you just joined the Amelia camp? Like, even Ra's on Ram, there's so many moments of like suspicion happening that's going on. But like, again, if you're like an actual retard and you can't understand the show beyond what the show is just showing you and you can't like actually think about the show, then you can't catch onto these little subtleties then you end up making these videos criticizing a show when you have no idea of the show you're even talking about. Also, did I forget to mention that this motherfucker is a simp too? This dude is always True. up this Amelia's girl's ass, bro. Like, I understand the dude trying to be around a girl that he likes and shit, but this motherfucker be thirsting for the pussy. That's to the true. Point where he doesn't even think about going home or even try to figure out how to get home. But does he want to go home is another question, right? This talking point gets mentioned in some other video where it's just like, it makes no sense to me why Subaru would never, you know, think about going home. But like, if you realize the kind of life that he's lived back at home, there is no way that you would want to go home. And if you actually watch season two again, right? These are more subtle things where you're not supposed to realize it here. But as you watch more and more, the character becomes way deeper. The peeling of the onion layer example again, you clearly know why, you know, he doesn't want to go home. And not only that, he can't go home. Or even try to figure out how the fuck he got in another world in the first place. All he cares about is being around this Amelia chick. And mm. the crazy shit- And why do you think that is the case, right? Like you are self-inserting yourself as this normal person from Earth who got transported and wants to go back home. But if you truly understood the character of Natsuki Subaru, then like you would understand that this all makes sense. He's a fucking neat. He's had a terrible, you know, a childhood. And his parents are great, but because his parents are so great, he doesn't get punished for anything. And it's this constant cycle of guilt and every day just building up, building up. He doesn't want to go home. Shit is, I don't even think she likes him like that or in that type of way. That is absolutely true. Amelia does not like Amelia. Uh, sorry, Subaru as like a man. That shit doesn't happen until like, you know, second half of season two. I think she's just being a nice girl. True. But because Subaru is the fucking creep with predator-like tendencies, he's just looking at this Amelia girl like lunch meat. Like and you know what the funniest part is? He's absolutely correct about this. But he can't realize that that is the portrayal of the main character that the author is trying to tell you the faults that he has and then to correct and grow right it's just so funny when people criticize this character is shitty he's doing shitty things oh i can't watch it but it's just like have you ever thought that maybe that was the intention that the author has the balls to have a main character not be this perfect character that just solves everything, but to have a flawed, reasonable character that, you know, falls down to just, just rock bottom, but can also build himself up and do things amazing. Like, this is a concept that I don't think many people watching anime understand. Because most of the criticisms, again, is just like, that's the whole point, bro. Like, like, I don't think you understand the point of the story if you think that this is, like, a fault. Like, it's intentionally being portrayed that way. Like, oh, you're gonna be my new heroine and my isekai. Or he'll look at Rim and Rom and be like, oh, my own personal maze and my- That's the entire point. That he doesn't treat them with respect or real people. He treats them like NPCs in the beginning because he's a fucking neat thinking this is a video game without any consequences. But if you keep watching the show, you'll realize that things change as he realizes that. What do you want? A perfect character from the beginning throughout the story that just solves everything perfectly? That's the most boring shit ever. My isekai? And he'll do that little creepy ass weird face with the pedophile finger wiggle and shit? Like, you'll just be looking at this character like, oh, so you just think this shit is a fucking joke? Bro, you're in another world. He's so close. He's so close, but he's so far. It's, it's, it's actually like so funny to me, right? Like, like these people, they're right on the ball, 
but then they miss it entirely. At what point are you gonna start taking this shit serious? Like this motherfucker died multiple times and yet this fucking goo- I mean, if you're gonna tell me that you've watched 12 episodes and you don't think that he got serious by the end of episode seven, then like you're actually retarded and you can't comprehend what's going on or you're being intellectually dishonest. And I don't know what's worse. Self-reporting your monkey IQ or you have malice and you're grifting and you're actually trying to just farm hate videos without under like fully understanding the story but still saying these dumb talking points i honestly don't know what's worse goof is over here playing around calling different characters nicknames and shit instead of trying to find his way home in the worst case of this character being fucking stupid and just not taking anything serious at all is when he wanted to become a servant for emilia's castle and mm. after he became a servant for emilia's castle it was multiple days multiple nights of this motherfucker just getting killed knocked off night after night yeah. and then once he found out that the rim bitch who was training him for the servant position once he found out that she was killing him do you think this motherfucker was like oh no nah, fuck this shit i'm out hell no he kept on trying to stay there and shit trying to make good with rim and rom and this ronald well that again tells me that you didn't actually watch episode seven because if you did then you would understand that Rem and Ram actually held Subaru's hand and like saved him when he was pretty much almost like dying. You realize that these girls are not terrifying evil people, but they have their own reasons for being suspicious. Again, the whole witch's scent, the witch's cult, right? The suspicion of every time he loops, the miasma stacks and Rem gets it. And then you also know at the end of episode seven, before he jumps off the cliff, right? Straight bet music starts playing. He doesn't... I don't know if it's correct to say he forgives Rem and Ram, but he understands that they got their shit going on, but I want to protect you all. And, like, the anime just, like, tells you this, though. This isn't even, like, subtle things that you got to, like, pick out. The show specifically tells you why Subaru is willing to go beyond this and save these girls because, you know, it's actually Mady and, you know, the fucking bald dog, that, got, that horn that got cut off, right, so they can get controlled. They're the actual perpetrators, and we're the ones that's in danger. Like, I don't understand, like, did you actually watch the show? Because this is self-reporting, right? Again, this is just lazy fucking trolling. I really want to see somebody that watched the show, that understood the show, and then can make talking points that is so foolproof that you cannot deny what they're saying to shit on the show. But this guy genuinely didn't even watch the show. No McDonald looking ass motherfucker. What's his name? Oswald or some shit like that. He's now trying to make good with them so he can be around Amelia. And it's like, bro, you can't. Like, Subaru wanted to help Rem and Ram because he said he liked them. But we all know it's because he wants to be around him. Ugh, that's so wrong. Like, did you not see the scene? His realization that like, oh shit. Who was the ones holding my hands when I was like blood loss and I was like healing up and shit? It was Rem and Ram. Like, how don't you understand that? I cannot be fucking serious right now. Like, this character is fucking retarded. Who the fuck wants to live in the same place as their killer, let alone save them? This motherfucker wants to save this Rem bitch because he appreciates the help that she gave him when she was training him for the servant position. It's like, motherfucker, are you- No. The training- is not the most significant thing like you are genuinely missing the entire fucking point of why subaru sacrifices himself here and says i love you and he wants to you know save everybody like just do the like i'm not even asking for much just do your due diligence actually understand the story then talk shit or else you're gonna look like a fucking retard with your pants down as I farm you. you. that easy to please? Like besides Amelia and Puck, the rest of the motherfuckers at that castle have already made it known that they don't fuck with you. Like writing like this makes me wonder if the Arthur even knows what character logic is. The audacity for someone that couldn't even understand why Subaru jumped off the cliff to criticize the author. That's that's just the funniest shit. That's it's just Oh man. Like I understand this is an anime, but even with anime, there's a boundary that you shouldn't cross when creating a character with an illogical mindset. You can write a character with flaws and still make their actions and decisions realistic. Subaru one The actions are very realistic if you actually watch this show. 
but like you don't understand you have these like gaps of knowledge because you probably didn't even watch the fucking show then you're trying to make these criticisms which is based on nothing the foundation doesn't exist if you're logic so how the fuck can you start slam dunking this so confidently I'm just saying this is some Yamauchi shit from Classroom of the Elite, man. Like, you know what the most frustrating thing in the world is? It's people who are so stupid and ignorant, that are so unaware, that are so confident about themselves and to think that they're right. They don't question or do their due diligence and like look introspectively, but they talk as if they're like a subject matter professional. And it, it, it's just so frustrating because everyone else can see that you're stupid, but like, you think that you're a genius. That is the Yamauchi syndrome from Classroom of the Elite. Ignorant retards thinking that they're smart. It's just so frustrating because you can't convince a monkey that they're a monkey. They're too stupid to be aware that they're stupid. Save the person that killed him multiple times because she helped him with servant orientation is some of the dumbest, most unrealistic, most- Again, servant orientation is not the most important thing of why Subaru tries to save Rem and Ram. It's way more than that. If you don't actually remember the fucking hand-holding scenes when Subaru is in bed and Rem and Ram are there, there, giving them all their support for him to get healed up, which just shows how much they actually cared about him, and how could you make this argument? Because you didn't watch the show, you don't understand it. Most illogical shit I have ever seen in any anime. And even more, what makes Subaru's character so fucking annoying is that he won't shut the fuck up and he does way too fucking much. And what I mean- That's very true, but also intentional. When I say that he does way too fucking much, I mean him trying to be the hero without thinking first. Yes. You're, again, just like another perfect example of you're so close. You get it, but you don't get it. You don't understand. Like, he is doing too much. He's a prideful, arrogant motherfucker who's never accomplished anything, but wants to be the hero. He's doing it for himself, not other people. But he says that he's doing it for other people. That's the whole thing of Arc 3, by the way. Of like, you know, Subaru. This, like, who are you really doing this for? Is it for me or is it for you? And then later on at the end of, you know, the finale, he says that, hey, you know what? After all those lessons, I did it for myself. But still, I want to be by your side. And that's the conclusion of this whole selfish selflessness. But again, th these are talking points beyond episode 12 that this guy hasn't even seen yet. Or him just doing shit, period, without thinking first. This motherfucker has done so much stupid shit because he didn't think first. Like, for example... That's the entire point. To show all his faults, to show what kind of fucking neat he is. What kind of life he's left, left, uh, lived. And then for him to just get a rude awakening in this isekai world as he realizes that this is not a fucking video game. That this is like real life. Example, Amelia told this nigga, don't come to the capital. You stay your ass right here. What this motherfucker do? Took his ass straight to the capital. And mm -hmm. I didn't see anything past that. But from what I heard, this motherfucker embarrassed her. Subaru's character as a whole just fucking- So you didn't even like watch episode- I don't even know which episode that is, but that's the kind of episode where everything gets filtered out, right? The whole, uh, you owe me a debt that you could never pay off. But, like, he didn't even, okay. So, okay, that's episode 13. So he ended on 12. Sucks. He's obsessive. He's a weirdo. He's a dumbass. That's like, it. his character True. is just a pain to watch. Yes. And I need motherfuckers to stop comparing him to Okabe from Steins Gate because those characters are not the same. Yeah, they might seem the same. Also, people comparing Steinsgate to ReZero just in the fact that they both have like some sort of time travel regression mechanic is so fucking stupid. Like, I can't believe you genuinely think that, hey, if you enjoyed ReZero, you should watch Steinsgate. I'm not watching ReZero for the regression mechanic. I'm watching ReZero due to the vast amount of world building, the fascinating world of Lugunica and, you know, the world of ReZero and the witch's cult and divine protections and blessings and swordsmen and magic and all that different shit, right? That's what I'm watching ReZero for. Same on the surface level, but when you actually dissect their characters, bro, come the fuck on now. Okabe is not as obsessive as Subaru and he's for damn sure not a dumbass. I haven't watched Steins Gate, so I can't really say much about this, but for all the things that you're calling out Subaru for, that is the entire point. Ass like Subaru. That mad scientist persona shit that Okabe does, all that shit is a facade. That weird ass otaku weeaboo shit that Subaru does, that's actually Subaru's character. Which is funny in hindsight if you've seen season two, because that too is a facade. The whole 
pose that he does. It's due to him trying to overcompensate for living in the shadow of his father. And then at the end of the trial, right? He then does the pose again, but this time it's different. Rather than him trying to stick out and be, you know, uh, like a pick me, look at me attention horror in school that ruined his fucking orientation. Instead, he now does it. And it's very endearing that he's like accepting his flaws and now he's making it his own. That's the entire point. Now, when it comes to Amelia, Ram Ram, Puck, Roswell, and whoever the fuck else in that show, they fucking suck all right? Why? Roswell is just the evil ass Ronald McDonald in the cut. Amelia is a basic bitch who comes off as a complete airhead, and the way she talks and acts is like some anime dating sim type shit. I wonder why a mountain girl who's had never exposure to, you know, modern society acts like this. Shit. The same with Rim and Rom. They seem like programmers. Why do people pronounce Ram as Rom? I don't understand because Rom is Romji. Then there's Ram with an A. Then there's Rem with an E. Echidna's doing that I thought was just fucking mean, but do people genuinely pronounce the A in Ram as Rom? What is that? programmed AIs in an anime dating sim game or some shit, and that weak ass backstory doesn't change how I feel about them at all. They also have a lolly in this show that always says, I suppose, before and after every fucking sentence. Like this little bitch be saying, I suppose, in sentences that don't even warrant her to say this shit. It's like, are you just saying, I suppose, in If you're getting triggered by the Kashira at the end, again, like, brother. Like, you gotta be the softest motherfucker watching anime if you're getting triggered by this. Every fucking sentence just to fit into a trope or some shit is like, the fuck? As for Puck, he's whatever. Like, nothing. Fuck Puck, though. Deadbeat ass. Get away. Good or bad about his character, he's just whatever. Like, middle of the road type shit. Like, <laughs> but when it comes to this show as a whole, it's fucking terrible. If I had to give it a grade, I'll give it an F. F minus. And here's the thing, like, if, like, I don't care about the grade. I care about the logic it took to get to the grade. But this video has told me that you don't understand the show. You don't even understand the episodes you've seen. Everything that you've pointed out, the flaws and stuff, is the entire point of ReZero. For Subaru to treat this not seriously like a fucking game, but then get a rude awakening as he realizes that he needs to get his shit together. If you don't know that by the end of episode 7, with the whole straight bet shit, then, like, you are beyond redemption. The fact that you think that Subaru is trying to save these girls because he's a simp and because he's thankful for the orientation, for the butler shit. Like, that's the dumbest shit I fucking heard. Did you not see the moment when Rem and Ram and Biko too, right, was saving Subaru? There's a deeper reason for why he's trying to do this shit. And like, it's just so sad again. I want to farm these rage bait videos, but I want them to actually give a fuck and have good talking points that I can't refute. I want to open my mind and see different perspectives so that I can troll more people and farm them too. But this is just a lazy fucking video of someone that doesn't comprehend the show. And again, it's just like, how can you call this show so bad and stupid if you can't even understand what you're watching? Like, it's just, it's just so sad. This F plus doesn't matter. The shit fucking sucks. On a scale of one to ten, I get a shit like a two out of ten. Like I really don't know what else to say about the show. Like it's some cringy ass weeb otaku shit. And yeah, even though I only seen twelve episodes, I feel like twelve episodes is more than enough to see if a show is for me or not for me. That part is totally fine, right? I have nothing wrong with people saying. You know, this just show is not for me. Like the whole weeb otaku shit, that's the entire point. Isekai genre, usually the main character, is a fucking disgusting neat. Why? Because they're trying to pander to the audience that watches this shit, right? To self-insert yourself as that. If you cannot, you know, stomach that and you don't enjoy the type of character Subaru is, perfectly fine to say, I don't enjoy it. But the other criticisms made, like you're talking about the show without understanding the even point of it. Me, all right, so all you motherfuckers that's been to come to the comment section saying, Oh, this motherfucker only seen 12 episodes. Oh, you missing out, bro. Nah, fuck out of here. The show is trash. 12 episodes is like three plus hours, if not four plus hours of my fucking day. And four hours is nothing to play with in life. All right, I could be doing some other shit with my time besides that's watching fair. some loser ass weeaboo otaku weird ass nigga who probably beat his dick to cartoons who probably prefer 2D 
drawings over 3D real life women who simps over every girl that gives him any type of attention because he's an anti-social weirdo who's probably locked in his room all the fucking time. Like, again, you're right. This is all just factual things about Subaru. And that's the entire point. But in the fact that you cannot, like, understand this part, it's the saddest part. Like, you, you are describing the character Natsuki Subaru that the author is trying to portray to tell you a fucking lesson as the show progresses. But the fact that you cannot, like, understand that, to have the presence of mind of what kind of show this is trying to be, like, it's just, it's just telling of your overall, like, media comprehension. Time. As a matter of fact, I think Subaru even said that he's a lock-in or a shut-in or some shit like yes. that. Who go to his local 7-Eleven and eat food from there, and that's probably his only fucking diet or nutrient. That's, that, that, you're right. And that's the saddest thing. You think that you're dunking. You think that you're on fire right now, that you're spitting. But you're literally just stating the obvious point of the show. I just blows my mind how you can be so confident about this and miss the entire point. Christian, because he's an anti-social loser who doesn't know how to talk. He probably some high school dropout who stopped going to school because he felt like the world was against him or he felt like no one could understand him. When in actuality, his bum ass probably wanted to sit in that room all day, beating off the cartoons, watching anime and playing video games. Like, get this fucking school shooter, fucking loser ass guy out of my face. He pretty much, he pretty much lost season two then, huh? <laughs> Not gonna say it's, you know, word for word correct, but yeah, you're right. That that is the entire description of Natsuki Subaru and why he's a shut-in. And the whole point of the story is for him to struggle against these you know, challenges that he's running away from and to grow as a character, but you're not gonna get that growth by episode 12 because that's just more season two content, but you know, by watching season two content, then you get to see Super in a different light in season one. You can even appreciate the watch through is totally different, I would argue, because now you get to understand, oh, he's acting this way because of this, rather than thinking, why is he just like doing this pose and going on an outburst? You got me fucked up if you think I'm gonna watch some TV show about some otaku anime school shooter bum ass. And that is totally fine though, right? If you don't fuck with these otaku, you know, losers trying to have some sort of redemption and growth, perfectly fine. You don't have to watch it. You can enjoy whatever you want. But if you're going to come into the show and talk about the show as if you fucking know the show, and the criticisms you make are entirely missing the point of the show, that's a whole sudden thing. You don't have to watch ReZero. You don't have to enjoy it. That's a perfectly valid reason. But don't for a fucking moment talk about the show as if you understand the show because you do not understand the show. 7-Eleven Eden, motherfucking beat his dick the cartoons ass insert main character. Get this show out of my fucking face. It's trash, all right? That's all I had to say about this fucking show. If you like the video, like and subscribe. God damn, bro. I, I can't fucking stand ReZero. There's this one more minute. terrible, man. This shit might be worse than SAO. Based? <laughs> Listen, I'm an SAO glazer. <laughs> Based? Shit, even Kirito might be a better character because Subaru in this fucking show, yo, at least in well, Kirito is not really flawed. Kirito has his moments of vulnerability, but he is not the kind of character that Subaru is. Kirito is more close to those perfect characters that's able to solve everything without much introspection or growth, right? He is one. Of, I'm not gonna say he is just like a perfect static character. But, like, he is a fundamentally different type of character to Natsuki Subaru. And if you don't understand that, like, it's just a monkey that enjoys, you know, hype shit. And a main character that just handles business and isn't, you know, a loser compared to Subaru. Who is, it's more about the storytelling aspect and, you know, the introspection of all the different struggles that you've had. And all the things that you ran away from. But to confront them in a different world and then to grow from that. That is the entire point. And if you don't fuck with that, perfectly fine. But if you... Talk as if you know about the show and your criticisms are just completely missing the point. You just actually just look like a retard. Because oh, one second, one second. One second. This fucking show, yo, at least in SAO, I could laugh at how bad it was. This shit in ReZero, like, it only frustrates me, man, because this character's.
I love how he said he's only watched 12 episodes, but like all the fucking visuals that he's been showing is just season two content. Subaru, along with the decisions that he makes, it, it just fucking infuriating. It's like, bro, just get this shit away from me. Like, I'm happy to say that I'm glad I dropped that shit after episode 12, even though I kind of know what happens in episode 13. And bro made another video, I think, called, uh, he, he made another one for like, uh, I think season two, right? Season 2 is garbage. Man, wonder what's happening. He just keeps watching the show. It's so garbage, right? It's so trash. I can't believe I wasted my time. Four hours is so important to him. Yeah, he watched the rest of season 1. Then he watched the rest of season 2. <laughs> then made another video. <laughs> because you know why it is? Because at the end of the day, he's just making videos to farm the rage and the hate, right? It's just a business. So it's, this is not like a genuine, honest video. He's just grifting. 13 and shit like that. But I, I, I'm happy I dropped that shitty ass show. Yeah. Once again, if you like the video- He might be the biggest fan, bro. He might be the biggest fan. Dropping his show by episode 12, picking that shit back up, making a whole ass video essay, you know, dedicating it to ReZero. Then watching all of season two, they're making another video essay dedicated to ReZero. He might be the biggest fan of this show. And here's the best part. Let's read some comments. Oh, the like to dislike ratio about like 60, like uh, 66, you know, 33, right? Bro really going off. SAO might be better than ReZero. Well, that's a crazy ass claim, Mama. Honestly, that's a pretty base claim. I, I, I like that. Just a wild fucking claim. I never understand how Reza is out there and it's rap fan base think that they're entitled to use this loser is you and you don't like it because it strikes to true. This, this loser is you and you don't like it because it strikes to true argument. No, I think that argument would actually apply. Like that would be in a favorable way, right? People hating ReZero wouldn't look as super. Like this guy probably is not this, you know, otaku loser, but rather, you know, this argument is more like, you should support it if it's that. So I, I don't really, this argument makes no fucking sense. Like, first of all, unfalsifiably and shit. Second, speak for yourself. Do people think that the average person speaks out of turn intellectual debate? No, this is not the average person. This is the average otaku. I, 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 are, are you actually retarded? Like, who are you boxing with right now? And pain tolerance is the most shallow attribute in fiction. You can put your character in a grinder all you want and fill the pages. It won't substitute characterization. What do you mean simp grinder story? Like, you're, this is just, what is the pain tolerance? What, what are you talking about? Character in a grinder. You, you're basically saying like due to the regression, all the suffering doesn't make sense. Uh, this is still totally wrong. It's anime is popular because they are super in real life without Amelia Rem and Ram. This I think has definitely some weight to it because obviously the main character, how do you empathize, right? The best way to relate to a character is if you can see yourself in that character's shoes the bigger the parasocial self-insert relatability exists, the more emotionally engaged you will be able to show, the more popular the show will get. Makes sense to me. Bro says he's an evil-ass Ronald McDonald that cut the fucking sent me. You know, that's the Roswell shit. I mostly watch Reezer for the shock value. Watching Subaru make an ass of himself and getting killed is funny sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, kind of base. Uh, they should add you as a new tier of fishing bait over master bait. Again, like, I don't think this is good bait at all. Like, this is just trash. Like, I'm still, like, it's probably better than, let's say, Young Defiant. Because Young Defiant just rambles saying this is garbage because it's garbage. Y'all don't know what thick women is. Fuck you. That was the video. This is, uh, he's actually bringing up some talking points. But the examples are completely flawed. Because he doesn't understand exactly why Subaru would do these things. Like the whole Rem example of like, why would you save her? You're still simping. Like just because of the maid fucking, you know, uh, the orientation. That is beyond wrong. It's just crazy how like you can come to these conclusions being completely wrong. And other retards in the comment, comment section will glaze because they obviously are with the same mindset. They didn't actually watch ReZero nor did they understand the subtleties of it. So of course they're going to come to this conclusion, right? I hate when people say it's believable. No, the average person is not a neat. Uh, he is a believable person if you are a neat. Super does not reflect the average person. The average person is not really a neat like that. I don't like dumb characters, and this was too consistent for me to bear. He's not really a dumb character, though. He's quite intelligent, but he gets overcome by, like, 
intelligence and rational thinking goes out the window when you are overcome with your inner sins, your wrath, pride, you know, gluttony, greed, whatever. It overrides your, you know, rational thought and you do stupid stuff. That's the entire point. Reezer was my top three. Shame if it wasn't for you. You couldn't get into season two, but it is what it is. But he was all of season two. So come on, come on now. I have nothing to say about the video, but I'll see you all in season three. Yeah, that ReZero thing is kind of mid. The opinion has been made after rewatching the Elite 3. <laughs> Basically, uh, it's like a Steam video game rating. And it'll say 3 out of 10, don't buy. But he'll have clocked in like 4,000 hours into it. One thing I like about this is that I can't even blame you for disliking this show because it has its flaws and can be easily disliked. As a ReZero fan, I gotta subscribe this funny as fuck. I didn't really think that this is really funny. The funny part was how he's so close of describing the show for what it is and then completely missing the point of why the characters are portrayed that way. It's actually, that's the funny part. Yeah, this show's a disappointment. Being trapped in a time loop in a fantasy world would be a cool concept, but he doesn't take advantage of it at all. He doesn't try to learn from his mistakes. That's just fundamentally wrong. If you've seen season three, like... Arc 2, Arc 1, Arc 3, like even an Arc 1, what is the mistake that he learned from? It's the fact that he shouldn't try to do the shit by himself, but instead call for help from powerful friends and Reinhardt clutched up, right? What are you talking about he didn't learn from his mistakes? That's just wrong. He doesn't try to prep or use common sense. He does in the successful runs. He doesn't try to train over the course of weeks or months and restart the day so he can be useful. Um, you would probably, like in terms of like muscle growth, that would probably be reset but in terms of like swordsman proficiency maybe you could have grinded out against Wilhelm and shit that's an interesting thought I haven't seen a main character in a show say he's useless so often without trying to change anything no he does try to change stuff it's just that he fails over and over and you know uh, if you think about it the realistic depiction of a fucking neat who is like this 16 15 year old kid who's done nothing with his life to then be shown such impossible challenges it's very realistic the fact that you haven't seen a main character in a show he's so useless so often without trying to change anything is because the shows that you consume are filled with main characters that are just perfect from the beginning and have little to no growth and they can just handle everything and it's very unrealistic. That's why Subaru is so realistic. And what's even funnier, the show doesn't even ask the hard moral questions like, what happens to the timeline that I leave when I die? <laughs> Again, it's just like... Oh, if only you knew. If only you actually saw season two. Do all those people live in there? Oh, it's just... Uh, and I got two seasons into the show and still no explanation of its time loop powers. So you watch two seasons and you don't get this? Why would you even ask this question if you watch season two? The time loop powers is hinted that it is a borrowed authority of envy from Satala. There is a clear distinction being made in season two. Authority of Envy. And then, not only that, this shit was also answered, I... Again, like, you might be... This just... I, I think this is the perfect example. Stupid, ignorant monkeys with the media literacy comprehension of a monkey that think that they're smart and type out essays, but you read the essay and you realize that they self-report their intelligence. And that's the best part. Think about how stupid the average person is and realize that half of them are stupider than that. And engaging in YouTube comment sections is always going to be just the cesspool of society. I genuinely believe that the people that comment on YouTube comment sections, and that's why I encourage people to just, you know, type the Moya emote, then fuck off. I only respond to the Moya emote if you see my videos. You know why? Because I don't really want to encourage people to have you know, conversations or discussions in the YouTube comment section because that usually is just a fucking waste of time and will only result in me just farming retards that's gonna say the most stupidest shit. If you have something nice to say and want to support me, I really do appreciate it. But there is a reason why I just type Moya and it's clearly obvious because this is the kind of people that exist in the comment sections. It's just so painful that I have to read just vol insane volumes of just like the stupidest shit that you can't even imagine. And you think that I might be being cringed, that I'm like, oh, you think you're smarter? You think that you're such like a genius person? I don't. I think that I'm a pretty average monkey, but I have the awareness and at least does the due diligence of my own research to come to my own conclusions, right? And my opinions. And if I was wrong, I don't think many people will be watching me or even supporting the shit I do. It's just so sad again, just to see so many people that doesn't understand something and then talk about it with absolute confidence. But if you've asked anyone watching this shit or reading the comments that's actually know the show, you're just like self-reporting that you don't know shit at all.
but it is what it is. Thank you for the farm, Mr. Triggered Senpai. I may watch the season two stuff. It's just so funny that after he said, oh, it's just a waste of time. I can't believe I spent four hours doing this shit. I, I fucking hate this. The best thing I've done is drop the show. And then he picked up season one, <laughs> then made season two content. He really might be the biggest fan of ReZero at this point, man.